Hello and welcome. I'm glad to see you. I know um, Lily and Cameron are, are thrilled to have all of you here. I wanted just to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mother Bren, and I'm the priest here at St. Michael and All Angels Episcopal Church. Um, and so really, really glad to have you as our, our guest today. Just a couple uh, points of introduction um, and an explanation. In the, in the Episcopal Church, we expect people to participate. So I hope that you will follow along in your bulletin. I hope that you will sing. I hope that you will respond to all the prayers. Um, so we need your help with this. This is not this is not something that just you witness. It's something that you participate in. So I, I invite you to, to, to full participation. Um, I'm going to check the air conditioner because it feels warm and it shouldn't feel this warm um, and see what's happening. So hopefully it will get better. We'll try. Fans are going. I promise I'm not going to preach that long when it gets there. So, um, so welcome. I invite you to um, take just a couple of moments of silence, take a deep breath, and we'll begin our worship together in just a moment. stand. We'll begin singing hymn number 657. It's on the first page of your bulletin, Love Divine.
dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation, and our Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. It signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his church, and Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will, for the procreation of children and their nurture and the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Into this holy union, Lily Masters and Cameron Guzzi now come to be joined. If any of you can show just cause why they may not lawfully be married, speak now or else forever hold your peace. I require and charge you both, here in the presence of God, that if either of you know any reason why you may not be united in marriage lawfully and in accordance with God's word, you do now confess it. Lily, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. Cameron, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and in forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Well, all of you, Witnessing these promises, do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O gracious and ever-living God, you have created us male and female in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they make through Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns with you and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10 through 13, chapter 8, verse 6 through 7. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Set me as a seal upon your heart, and as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. It flashes, its flashes are flashes of fire and a fl raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love all the wealth of one's house, it would be utterly scorned. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Psalm 67. 
May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be, ways be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with, an, with equity and guide all the nations of the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessings. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. That was actually about half verse. <laughs> the second reading, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the cup complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been known fully. And now faith, hope, and love abide. All these three, and the greatest of these, is love, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand as you're able for our sequence hymn.
This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. So this is it. The day is finally here. All the preparing, all the planning, all the excitement, all the hopes and dreams. Today is your wedding day happening. One of the things that I love about Episcopal weddings is that we aren't just in and out in the Episcopal church. I've been to weddings where it took more time for the whole bridal party to get into the church than it does for the actual wedding to take place. And I think after months of planning and and really a lifetime of, of expectation, I think the couple deserves to have a wedding take longer than it might take to go through a drive through but now before you start getting nervous that I'm going to use my homily as an opportunity to drag this thing out, I will alleviate your concerns. My part is going to be short. Because I know that none of y'all came here today to listen to me talk. You came to be here for Lily and for Cameron. And they're here for each other. And the thing is, we aren't just here for a wedding. We're here for a marriage. We're here to witness and celebrate and bless the beginning of a union that will last the rest of their lives. And I've had the privilege of getting to know Lily and Cameron over the last several months. And so I know that as much as they've been looking forward to this day, to these particular moments, what they're really looking forward to is their life together. They're looking forward to supporting each other, to encouraging each other, and to encountering everything that comes next as partners. Probably a lot of us who are here today could give Cameron and Lily some great advice about how to have a happy marriage. And I hope they take advantage of some practical tips from people who've been there, wisdom from those of you who have lived experience, and I hope you do give them some advice. But for now, I want us to turn to the advice we can glean from Holy Scripture, from the readings that we heard today. We get a very simple and straightforward message from the Gospel of John. Love one another as Jesus loved. John's Gospel also tells us that God became flesh and lived among us. God did this in order to show us how to love each other, in order to show us what love is like. And then Paul's first letter to the Corinthians elaborates on that a little bit. What is love like? Love is patient and kind. It bears all things. It believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And if we look a little further back, further back in the service, further back in the Bible, We get from the Song of Solomon that love is strong. It cannot be quenched by many waters. It cannot be drowned. There isn't anything more powerful on earth than love. For you two to be able to love each other with patience, with kindness, hope, endurance, for you to be able to love each other fiercely and deeply, truly, 
it helps to have the faith that God loves you in this way. And when we know that we are loved fiercely, truly, deeply, with patience, with kindness, hope, and endurance, we have the ability to love others this way too. The beauty of a marriage is that it's a sacrament of the church, an outward and visible sign of inward and spiritual grace. Marriage is a gift from God. It's for your mutual joy. But it's also for all of us who will witness this marriage. Cameron and Lily, when people look at you, they look at the way you love each other, they will be able to see the love of God. And that is so important. It's a big responsibility. My prayer for you is that you bear this responsibility with honor and with joy. Now I want you to pay close attention to what's going to happen next. Lily and Cameron are going to marry each other. This isn't something that I'm going to do. As, as an ordained priest in the Episcopal Church, I will hear their vows made in God's name and pronounce that it's done. They will have done it. God will have done it. And then what we'll do is pray for them. Ask God to give them wisdom and grace, peace and fulfillment. And I want you, Lily and Cameron's family and friends, to know what an important job this is, that you pray for this couple. I hope you know what an honor it is. I hope it is your joy. And I, continue, I hope that you continue to pray for them throughout their marriage. A wedding is an opportunity to see faith in action. Two people who have chosen to be joined together in a church, in the context of a Christian liturgy, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. A wedding is an opportunity to see hope in action. Two people who are imagining a future that's better together. Imagining a future with good in store. Imagining the grace and happiness that's to come. That a marriage, a marriage is an opportunity to see love in action. Two people who go through sorrow and joy, hardships and comfort, and still continue to be an example of the love of God. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. Thanks be to God. Take I, you, Lily. I, Cameron, take you, Lily. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or for worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Lily, take you, Cameron. I, Lily, take you, Cameron. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Okay. 
that and you can let go of your hands. And let me have the rings. Lily, I give you this ring. Lily, I give you this ring. Louder. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Cameron, I give you this ring. Cameron, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Put your hands up here with your rings. Bless, O oh Lord, these rings to be signs of the vows by which this man and woman have bound themselves to each other. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, um, right hands together again. Now that Cameron and Lily have given themselves to each other by solemn vows, with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Please stand and we will pray for Cameron and Lily. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation and giver of all grace, look with favor upon the world you have made and for which your son gave his life and especially upon this man and this woman who you make one flesh in holy matrimony. Amen. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life, that each may be the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, a companion in joy. Amen. Amen. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with one another all the days of their life. Amen. Amen. Give them grace when they hurt each other to recognize and acknowledge their fault and to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Amen. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love to this sinful and broken world that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness heals guilt, and joy conquers despair. Amen. Bestow on them, if it is your will, the gift and heritage of children and the grace to bring them up to know you, to love you, and to serve you. Amen. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual affection that they may reach out in love and concern for others. Amen. Grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Amen. Grant that the bonds of our common humanity, by which all your children are united one to another, and the living to the dead, may be so transformed by your grace that you will be done, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Where, O oh Father, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign in perfect unity now and forever. Amen. Amen.
most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of man and woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out an abundance of your blessing upon this man and this woman. Defend them from every enemy, lead them into all peace, let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle upon their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them.